It is time for another match. What I got for you today is a diamond level Protoss versus Terran played on Honor Grounds LE. Spawning in the southeast corner, playing with the red Terran pieces, we have none other than the player known as Drop the Hammer. And his opponent spawning in the bottom left, playing in blue and playing with Protoss. He goes by the nickname of Aramaug. Aramaug? Aramaug. I think I'm gonna go with Aramaug for this particular match. Now, there's one thing that I know about this game, okay? And that is that the Protoss player is not gonna be opening up with a cannon rush. I mean, I specifically requested if Motlessis could find me a really cool match of StarCraft to a higher level, you know, fewer submitted replay where the Protoss player is not opening up with a cannon rush. Here's the thing. Out of all of the matches that I've casted so far, right, of fewer submitted games, I would say in about, like... I don't know, if I were to guess, probably in about 80% or so of the cases, whenever there is a Protoss player present, and it is like below Master League or so, the Cannon Rush seems to be like their default opener. I don't actually know if that is true. Let me know down below in the comment section of the video if you are playing, uh, you know, in Diamond League or below or so, whether or not the Cannon Rush is as common as it seems to be in the fewer submitted replays so far. But regardless, we do indeed see a very early Gas Geyser opener right here. Two Assimilators going down here already for for the Protoss player in blue, so we'll keep an eye out on that because he's got something in store for us today. Meanwhile, on the Terran end of the map, or the Terran's end of the map, rather, um, he's already got that Gas Geyser going up. Barracks just now finishing up, so there should be a Reaper indeed underway here as well. Protoss Probe has made his way to the top left corner and then the top right as well. He will know exactly where his opponent has spawned right now. And actually, it's going off into a... Oh, I was going to say, it's going off into a bit of a weird direction. Pylon apparently going down right above the command center here. The Drop the Hammer has put down in his in-base expansion. Now, this could be a couple of different builds here from the Protoss player, but I'm going to make the assumption here that he will be opening up with a Stargate. Everything is aiming at that right now. We do see that Cybernetics Core just about to finish up, so we'll have to keep an eye out on this pylon right here. But, of course, these are higher level players, so they know very well how to time this one out. And, indeed, that Stargate already going down at the 2 minute and 10 second mark at this point in the match. And here's the thing. Generally speaking, Terran players will not be expecting that until about a good minute and a half or so later. And with a map this large, you can see Drop the Hammer needs to put down a bunker here in the earlier stages of the game. With a map this large, it's actually rather tricky to figure out what your opponent is going for. Now, Reaper almost ended up getting surrounded there. Mothership Core will be able to come out right now. Now, Drop the Hammer did scout out that there is no in-base Nexus taken just yet. I would like him to start scouting this Natural here as well, which is exactly what he's doing. Which should be his last resort, because he needs to start up some sort of defense here in his base. If he wants to go ahead and defend against this imminent oracle it almost has to be an oracle there we go and the oracle is being built here and so far while the terran player is aware that something weird is going on he has absolutely no clue and he does not know about the stargate that is about to spawn an oracle on his end of the map Factory immediately being followed up here as well with attack lab. No Cyclone play, no Widow Mine play, no nothing. So that is going to be a little bit tricky. We do see that Engineering Bay here go down, um, you know, relatively early, I suppose. And while that Nexus did get taken up here as well by the Protoss player, this Oracle should be here to do a lot of damage. Second Command Center and the Orbital Command on that as well has now just finished up. So that will mean that this Oracle can indeed start beaming away at as many of these workers as he would like. Skip that natural I really like that decision actually to go straight into the main mineral line and here we go there need to be about eight Marines here or so to try and take down this Oracle there was a missile turret in production of course that one did get target fired down and you can clearly see the skill level difference right Ooh, I actually kind of like this as well the Oracle going straight after the Marines a bit of a time-consuming job though and actually it's starting to look a little bit risky but this Oracle is doing so much work Missile turret eventually will finish up here, but the Oracle gets on out of there while a second one is joining in that natural in-base expansion here as well. Aramog going after all of the SCVs and doing so much damage here in the earlier stages of the game. Even the mule going down right now as well. Target firing down that missile turret, the ultimate BM. And with 17 kills here, or 17 worker kills rather here in the earlier stages of the game, or well, I guess make that 18. Life becomes pretty damn difficult here for the Terran player in red. 20 supply right now versus 45 for the Protoss. Is there anything else being produced? Actually, is this the third Oracle? Wow, so much damage being done here with these Oracles on this map uh, so far. Indeed, there is a single Mothership Core here for defense. But at the same time, Aramauk is just simply doing more and more pressure and 
building up, you know, that economy at home in the meantime as well. 33 probes right now versus only 13 SCVs. That is not the situation that you want to be in as the Terran player in a match like this. Now, what exactly is going to be the follow-up here? We do see a lot of probes already in that natural, so a lot of additional mining will go down here very, very shortly. More and more additional gateways now also warped in here, so Aramag will be able to follow this up with, for example, Adepts. They're, you know, one of the most common units here, and actually, ooh, we now also see that Stasis Warrior out on the front of that map, but I was going to say, there is now also a Void Ray joining this battle. This actually could become a bit of an issue, because Drop the Hammer, desperately trying to add on more and more economy, I think he's going to be under a lot of pressure here in just a little bit. Now, of course, none of these units can properly shoot up other than the Void Ray, so the Void Ray will need to defend against this single Viking here. Viking just simply trying to do as much damage as it possibly can. In the meantime, there's also a Siege Tank available. That Bunker is still at the front. I would really like to see a Salvage at this point in the game, although there are a lot of units here ready to start the aggression on. And Aramauk is looking to close out this game as early as he possibly can. Viking does get shut down there eventually. More and more pylons going down here as well. And with that Mothership core brought over, this may very well mean that Protoss is trying to close out this game right here, right now. Revelation being used, very, very nice. We'll give him full vision of all of the units right now available for the Terran player. But here's the thing. We all know how much damage Siege Tanks can do in just a matter of seconds. So while I actually suggested for Drop the Hammer to, you know, sell that bunker I think it's actually the correct choice to let that one live for a little while longer I mean it's it's practically a piggy bank at this point right you can salvage it whenever you please and he's still building up that economy now there is the potential here for a lot of aggression, but siege tanks deal so much damage to all of these units on the ground. And this is still not an easy fight to take. There are now also, you know, more and more units on the production tab. We see that ramped up production here with that starport edition. I am assuming there's going to be a second, uh, or rather a third siege tank coming out here very, very shortly as well. And Drop the Hammer is not giving up just yet. A second thing that I noticed, besides the fact that a lot of people love to cheese as the Protoss player, in a lot of these games is that generally speaking if the cheese does not straight up kill the opponent there is a chance that their macro play is not as strong as you would expect it to be I mean a lot of players indeed seem to sort of get stuck in this continuous train of you know just simply cheesing out their opponents and Aramauk he's most definitely putting in a lot of effort to try and close out this game right here right now another gateway finishing up we see more and more warpins going down as well and he looks like he wants to push up this ramp I don't think he's gonna be able to do a whole lot that is gonna be a very very close engagement 84 supply versus 54 so technically speaking this should be a pretty straight up advantage here for the Protoss player in blue but these siege tanks they just simply shred through everything and of course you gotta keep in mind that these marines are definitely looking solid as well now there's no stim pack or whatever available right at this point in the game it's just now starting up here as well so drop the hammer kind of missing the ball right there but he's actually moving out no 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 no, no. drop the hammer get out get out dude just start up another command center keep up the macro <sighs> he does not want to walk into that stasis ward he doesn't know about it oh my god he's trying to... dude you just you just walked into one with your reapers please be smart please be smart here drop the hammer you're better than that dude Alright, so far so good. Void Ray's trying to loop around here. They're actually trying to bait the Marines out. I like that move a lot. Look at that. <gasps> Beautiful bait there by the Protoss player, making that really cheeky move. But still, there's so many siege tanks up here on the high ground, as well as... Oh my god, there's one on the ramp here, but this is going to be a very, very close engagement. We see that Mothership Core using that time. We're trying to do as much damage as possible. The thing is, though, there are still a whole lot of Void Rays here in the sky, and these Void Rays do work in just a matter of seconds. Void Rays, however, are starting to take a lot of damage from these Marines that did just manage to get out of that Stasis Ward, and with a bunch of overextension, literally each and every one of them ends up dying. And all of a sudden, while the supply count is still in favor here of the Protoss player in blue, and he's not giving up just yet and as a matter of fact he's also built up that third nexus the advantage that he had just a couple of seconds ago did get closed out very very nicely i mean that stasis ward it's got a pretty long duration but as soon as it ended all of a sudden, those Marines were capable of shooting down everything. And you can see, though, those Siege Tanks, right? Even though the Void Rays activated Prismatic Alignment and they were right on top of them, they deal so much damage in just a matter of seconds. 
Three adapts being warped in right now as well, which is the perfect amount, or actually a fourth one now as well, apparently. But that's the perfect amount to start dealing some damage to all of those SCVs. I think with some continued harassment here, um, you know, this should still be a really solid game here for our Protoss player. And while the supply counts are still looking a little bit scary here, we see a lot of additional production now available here for the Protoss player, now that he's got that third Nexus ready to get up and running. Another wave of adepts actually being warped in right now. I would really like to see a follow-up though, with maybe some robotics units. We do see a dropship moving across the map right now too, which I actually really like. Smart little move. While this semi-contain is still going on, and there are a few units here ready to deal damage to the mineral line of the Terran. At the same time, the Terran is wiping out so much of those workers here in the in-base expansion of Aramauk. Aramauk starting to take quite a few hits here. Of course, we do see those shades moving across here, but Aramauk trying to leapfrog as many of those units out of there. Cute little move there. Manages to keep most of them alive, but at the same time, while he's doing a good job microing the army on the other end of the map, actually that Nexus is starting to take a lot of damage. Oh no! These adepts are not fighting. He did not set the rally point after warping them in, and actually the Marines are going after the Nexus. Will they be able to get it? It's 25. Oh my god, no way! No way! The warp in there was in time, but rather than rallying the units, a lot of workers ended up getting killed the Nexus ended up falling, and while none of the Marines live to tell the tale, the Medivac will be able to get, you know, get on out of there and report to the Terran Dominion that indeed that Nexus went down. That's a huge pickup. No, actually, scratch that. No one will ever know. <laughs> Let's just forget that this is an RTS. Nobody will ever know that that Nexus ended up falling. Now, Aramauk, he must feel pretty triggered. I mean, he had a huge advantage just a couple of seconds ago, but he really underestimated that strength there of those siege tanks and the marines. I've done the mistake myself many a times before. I mean, I'm sure that if you've been watching the live stream whatsoever, you'll be aware of the fact that I quite like my proxy Stargate play as well whenever I do play with the Protoss pieces. And I have underestimated the strength of marines and siege tanks in the past as well. They are extremely powerful units, but once again, Aramark is not giving up the aggression just yet. He is actually pushing onwards here with a few adapts inside of his opponent's main base while building up that force at home. But his army here is not that high tier. I would really like to see some splash damage being added on right now, because we all know what happens once Terran manages to get critical mass with marines, marauders, as well as medivacs. I mean, it's a classic composition for a good reason. And it's extremely powerful, it scales well with upgrades, and you need at some point, right, as a Protoss player, you need to get some static defense out, or not some static defense, rather, some splash damage out in order to deal with all of those units. We do see the attack upgrade right now for, uh, you know, the Adepts, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. This is going to be very, very tricky. We need to see some Storm, maybe some, you know, Colossi, maybe some Disruptors, at least something that will be able to contain all of these Terran units in their base. Oh my god, a massive stim being activated to kill two Adepts. Whew. You can't do that, drop the hammer. Those are the kind of differences that make, you know, a matter of, like, life and death in Master League in particular. So much energy wasted right there on those medevacs. If another attack is imminent here, this could become trouble. Regardless, though, third... Uh Command Center did now finish up here, and the Protoss player, uh, he's still not mining from that in-base expansion. I think he's just sort of given up on that one. Um, the Protoss player is just desperately building up more and more economy. Now, I do actually quite like this move here, the Robotics Facility. Either, or rather, the Robotics Bay, right? I would really like to see a follow-up with either Disruptors or Colossi. If your micro isn't amazing, you probably want to be going for the Colossi instead, but hold that thought, because apparently a massive drop is going down here at the back of the Protoss Natural. Now, apparently Protoss did not decide to retake it for good reason, because this is a difficult one to engage into, but with this many Terran units in place, the Mothership Core's Photon Overcharge will be absolutely crucial. There it does go down, should be able to zone away with these units for a little while longer. Cyclone desperately trying to take one for the team, and while it does end up falling there, still a lot of these Terran units are looking rather terrifying. But you see plus one, plus one available right now for the Terran player in red. Units being picked up, however, and it looks like he will be able to boost it out of there and go into the third base location as well. He decides to drop here as well. Mothership Core once again trying to close that distance. It will be able to get shot down here and potentially the Nexus actually will also end up falling there. Huge commitment might drop the hammer. Not taking any safety there whatsoever I and mean, that's a very risky move. He ended up taking a lot of losses there but somehow some way, I think what I said earlier may very well be true. He is now significantly ahead in the supply count plus it's three bases versus only one. I let you play 
bith kid? Does he mean bitch kid? Like, what does he try to say there? I'm not sure what that means. Is that is that something cool? I, I haven't been in high school in a while. I don't know if that's something cool to say, but regardless, Aramau, apparently feeling confident, does not quite realize here that while his early game cheese worked out pretty well, his follow-up was not that amazing, and while he's swearing at his opponent, telling him that he lets him play, I'm starting to wonder here if he's not at a pretty substantial disadvantage. Orbital Commander will finish up here as well. I kind of would have liked to see maybe even like a orbit or rather a planetary fortress that would have made this third base practically invulnerable but drop the hammer has got such a significant supply lead right at this point in the game that i don't know if it even matters now once again the protos units are being shoot home there is a single disruptor available now too so that could potentially turn the tide still it's one of those units that can indeed change out the outcome in a game in just a matter of seconds second one now also joining in as well as a third and a fourth bomb being queued up here no additional nexus being produced however and that's a little scary i mean we see units being queued up we see that blink upgrade also now being researched but the economy for aramauk is not that impressive anymore and the way that he's posturing it may very well be the case that he's gonna try and close out this game right here right now once again the amount of economy though and the amount of mules there are mining right now i mean i'm almost scared to look at that income tab look at that it's absolutely ridiculous mules mine for so many minerals and we're actually almost hitting that 3,000 minerals a minute mark right now for the player in red for his only 500 for the player in blue although this disruptor hit could be enormous disruptors taking so much oh my god that was that was so much damage right there in just a matter of seconds. I did not think, actually, that Terran would be taking that many losses. And all of a sudden, this game may very well turn around once again. That's the thing about Disruptors. You look away for just a split second, and all of a sudden, the army can be gone. Drop the hammer, just drop the ball there, dealing a lot of damage to his opponent's army and killing bases left and right. And while he is still dropping inside of his opponent's main base as well, there is very little to defend here in the meantime at home. This could be anyone's game. Once again, Disruptor hit, taking out so many of those units. And those Disruptors are worth their weight in gold. Third base may very well be forced to lift off right here. A lot of these SCVs are following each other around, but a lot of them will not left, lift to tell the tale because you can see they are all taking so much damage. Third Orbital Command will be forced away here. Now, Siege Tank once again available. It's evaporating a lot of these units and they are going to be forced out of this for now. But this game is looking to get evened up at the very least reasonably well. Considering Drop the Hammer was just very far ahead in supply, he is now forced to lift up that command center and bring it elsewhere. It looks like he may even be looking to land it right up here, north of his natural command center. And actually, at the same time, a command center is now also finishing up here in the top right corner of the map. Still, Aramauk, his aggression has been really, really solid this game. Other than some missed engagements, in particular losing those four void rays for very, very little, he's been doing work. He's not afraid to move across the map. And while he is, you know, he's bathmouthing his opponent for just a little bit, he's still trying to continuously pile on the aggression. And I can most definitely respect that. Look at the amount of medevacs that are available right now, though. He will need to either kill this army or it will get absolutely, you know, healed back up. Um, you know, back to full in just a matter of seconds. There is very little middle ground right now in Aramauk. He's finally retaken. Oh my god, once again, so many so many units falling there. Once again, so many units falling there. While Aramauk is desperately trying to, you know, build up that lost economy that he had previously, he doesn't have that many units available. And with this continued mining here as well, at the very least, I was assuming that maybe there would be some mules once again. I would really like to see Aramauk backing up for just a little bit and maybe even establishing a nexus right up here. That's a difficult one to take and indeed Drop the Hammer is now also thinking along the same lines, trying to scan whether or not that fourth base is available and that does allow him to just simply sit back. The Liberators will make this a little bit easier of course because they can zone away at this Protoss army for quite a little while. Observer once again moving onwards but Drop the Hammer, he's got a lot of gas saved up, he's missing up the macro here for just a little bit but once again oh my god this is a little awkward <laughs> this is a little strange neither player has yet figured out that they are very very close to each other but that base is right now absolutely crucial while more and more mining is now also happening here in the top right corner and a bunch of scvs are being added on this base will shortly be scouted here and that single oracle can once again wreak havoc 
Fort Base now also indeed taken right here for Aeromauk. He's not giving up on this game just yet. And while he was BMing his opponent, sounding very, very confident, he shortly will finish up. What? What? Why? Why would you not just kill him? Why would... Why would you not just kill him? All right, well, that's all of the energy gone out of that Oracle. At the very least, it will halt mining for just a little while, and I guess it will time... Actually, does it time out the mules? I don't even know how it works. I think it may actually counter the timer here, but regardless, the uh, Stalkers will now also join in this battle, as well as the rest of this army, and all of these units will help clean up all of these things. Yeah, apparently, that does actually continue the timeout right there on the mules. I didn't even know it worked like that. Anyway... Void Ray being added on once again. Aramauk, I mean, he will be spotted right now with this proxy Stargate that he built here really early on into the game. The command center will now also end up dying, and drop the hammer has got to be very, very careful. He's moving across the map now with a very large army, but one thing to keep in mind is that he's sort of being zoned out very, very nicely at this point in the game. A couple of these SCVs decided to move down towards this expansion. It's a little scary because that base cannot be found. That is the lifeline right now of the Terran player in red. If that base gets scouted, this game can be over very, very quickly. However, we do see a very... Oh my god, once again, these Disruptor hits are insane! Aramauk somehow, some way, cleaning up so many of these units with just a handful of these Disruptor hits. Some of them have got 24 kills on a single Disruptor. That is well worth that price. Once again, though, Disruptor trying to move forward, and I mean, the micro is being tested here for the Terran player. While his macro has been pretty solid, and he's been producing a lot of units, his defensive positioning and whatnot have been great as well. He's just losing way too much to all of these Disruptors. Finally, we saw a reasonable split here, but still, there's now almost more Medivacs than there are Marines and Marauders. Command center in the top right corner, still looking fine. Fort Nexus now also finished up here, so Aramauk will be able to continue onwards with that mining, and he's still piling on the aggression. Desperately trying to connect here to the best of his abilities, and he's doing a mighty fine job at that right now. Sadly, these Liberators, I mean, they're doing a lot of work. They're mostly, like, zoning their opponent right now, I suppose. But they're really not picking up any kills just yet. Aramark desperately trying to add on whatever he can. Of course, uh, this Stargate has now been spotted as well. And with the Protoss unit sort of, like, moving towards the northern end of this map, I think very shortly, Drop the Hammer will realize, indeed, that his opponent has left. And he will finally be capable of cleaning up that Stargate that has, indeed, caused him so much trouble. Now, you gotta be careful, though. You do not want to send your entire army over there you do not want to send your entire army over there if you are a Terran player you can very quickly lose all of your units due to being you know just simply out of position I mean these siege tanks need to be sieged up these liberators need to be in their anti-ground mode and Protoss is starting to look like it may very well want to push up this ramp 93 versus 103 supply Aramauk sounding confident in this game so far and being pretty confident as well now luckily uh, drop the hammer apparently sniffing this one out and you will be able to pick up everything in these dropships you can see though so many of these units available at the same time though the Protoss is at the front door gotta be careful you killed your own units there dude you can't do that, Aramak. You lost so much stuff there. Oh my god. Once again, though, this zoning is absolutely ludicrous. And while apparently the disruptors were taking one for the team there in the sense that they killed about a good 10 supply worth of Protoss units as well, this game could still be either players. I mean, Aramak building up more and more units. We finally see that plus three in production now as well for the Terran player, where there's only one attack here as well as one flyer attack for the Protoss. This may become one of the biggest causes uh, and biggest like outcomes of this match. I mean, upgrades, they are extremely important. And while generally speaking, I would say Diamond League players do not focus and you know realize the strength of upgrades as much as they should drop the hammer will in just about a minute or so from now finish up plus three attack and i mean you gotta keep in mind these marines and marauders they scale extremely well there's three siege tanks available right now there's a lot of metavix full of energy there's a bunch of liberators in the sky and with proper zoning this could be a game for the terran player at the same time though if these disruptors manage to connect properly they can do a ton of damage one disruptor activated right there just to sort of like bait out his opponent potentially try and see if he can get a pot shot in of course he's got to be careful though you do not want to engage in top of all of these siege 
tank that actually a whole lot of marines and marauders do end up falling here but this is the kind of army that protoss players hate fighting against this is a very very scary force siege tanks in combination with liberators they're very very powerful but so far these liberators got picked up very very nicely siege tanks not quite helping out right there and somehow some way aramauk is still looking like he might be able to potentially take this one disruptors moving onwards here trying to do as much damage as they possibly can all of them has got over 10 kills right now a lot more units in production now too we do see that robotic facility i would really like to see a, rec a second robotic facility being added on right now as well but finally this probe will shortly be able to figure out that there is indeed a base mining here in the top right corner and he will be very quick to find out that this mineral field is already starting to disappear and that's a little scary. That is a little scary. Observers have not been able to find that, but hold that thought because apparently we got a dropship um, massacre going on right now with Drop the Hammer trying to move all of his forces from the, you know, outside of the fort base location into the main of the protos and this is terrifying these siege tanks will be capable of dealing so much damage colossi immediately target fired down second one also does end up falling we saw the oh my god we saw so many units there dying in just a matter of seconds and it looks like the doom drop in the main base may very well be the deciding atom <laughs> be the deciding factor in this game because apparently aramauk indeed wants to fuck drop the hammer's mum and he is a bit of a sour loser now you have these kind of players on the ladder right they decide to open up cheesy they get very very far ahead but they are not capable of closing it out and I think that Aramauk is kind of one of those players. He did it really smartly, right? His army control was looking really solid. I love this disruptor hits. And he managed to tech switch quite aggressively. But all things considered, I felt like he just did not expand fast enough. Remember when those dropships went into his natural, right? Now, actually, I say dropships. I, I said the plural right there. But it was just a single medevac with, I think, eight marines that killed, like, an entire mineral line worth of probes as well as the nexus itself. And then a little later, he also ended up losing his third i mean he had to rebuild that economy and really pile on the forces because he just simply did not have enough production there at the end to really just simply crank out the units that he was so desperately looking for a single robotic facility not quite enough right there i think there were maybe like six seven eight gateways there in total for this entire match not quite enough and drop the hammer rightfully so ends up picking up the victory. Solid match right here of Protoss versus Terran. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. And while you're at it, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links are in the description. I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I will see you in the next one.